My friends, I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Since you're all good Christians today, I'll give an extra long sermon for you today. How about that? No? <laughs> no. no, this is just going to be a reflection here. My partner, always the adventurous type, will often challenge me to go beyond my comfort zone and confront my fears and anxieties. In spite of my persistent stubbornness, he usually succeeds in convincing me to try something at least once. Such was the case this past August while spending a few days in Vancouver. After spending some time exploring the city and resting along a couple of the city beaches, Roman suggested we hike one of the nearby mountains known for its arduous climb. Reluctant at first, I looked over a brochure of the trail and decided that perhaps the hike wouldn't be such a bad idea. I certainly could use the exercise, and from what I gathered from the pictures of a wide trail and people of every age happily climbing the mountain, I figured it couldn't be all that hard. Surely, marketing and promotional material would never deceive us into climbing a rugged and difficult terrain. My first sus suspicion that the marketing might have failed to mention a couple of important details was a sign at the base of the trail warning persons with heart conditions not to make the climb but rather to take an easier trail to the top. I gave Roman a worried look, to which he assured me at the time that the sign was merely a legal requirement and that we ought not to worry much. Additional signs along the first few stops of the trail gave me further pause to consider going much further. One sign indicated that the trail was slippery and narrow it was steep, with steep cliffs along its edges. Another marketer, marker suggested that if we were struggling at that point of the trail, to turn around and make our way down the trail to take the easier route. This message was further emphasized by another post that left me with the impression that one would die if one turned around at any point beyond it. I might be exaggerating this later point, but believe me, there were many moments at this point where I began to reconsider what I was doing. Roman urged me onward, and despite my fears, I kept my eyes ever forward, hopeful the end would be near. Little did I know how difficult that mountain hike would be. The trail was indeed steep, narrow and rocky. The early morning mist made the rocks slippery and the damp air quickly soaked our clothes. I watched women and men fitter than me struggling, gasping for air as they raced for the top of the mountain. My body grew tired with each and every step and I began to question why I ever even consented to such a hike. I wanted to quit. I simply wanted to stop and give up. And I must confess, I complained bitterly about the stupid idea of climbing the mountain, which really didn't please Roman all that much, let me tell you. <laughs> Those of you with spouses know this. <laughs> These can be fun moments. Yet we pressed onward and made it to the top. I'm glad we did. As we reached the summit of the mountain, I turned to look behind me and saw breathtaking views of lush forest and the sparkling waters of the ocean below. An overwhelming sense of the holy came over me. I sensed the awesome power of God and felt something change within me. And I wondered, why was I so willing to give up and not press on? 
Had I become too comfortable in life and not open to new challenges and experiences? I recalled our hike up the mountain as I read the Sunday's lessons from the book of Job and the Gospel of Mark. Each of the stories speak, in one way or another, of transformation and seeing things anew. The central figures, Job and Bartimaeus, endure great suffering and isolation. Yet despite their suffering and pain, both turn to God and God's compassion and love. And both are transformed and given new sight. The ascent of, of a mountain has long served as a metaphor of the spiritual life and the transformation we undergo as we tra traverse the valleys and ravines of suffering and tribulation in life. Countless Christian mystics have explored this theme, including figures such as the early Christian writer St. John Climacus in his wonderful work, The Ladder of the Divine Ascent. So too have the great poets of Western literature, such as Dante in his masterpiece, The Divine Comedy. Dante describes the ascent to God as achieved by way of a mountainous climb. These writers, and countless more, all saw the arduous climb up a mountain as exemplifying our journey to God. Grounded in Jesus' command to take up our cross and follow him, the Christian spiritual tradition understands suffering to be a part of the human experience, something we neither flee from nor seek. Rather, we endure suffering confident in the hope of resurrection and new life no matter how difficult the trials may be. Contrary to popular televangelists of our day who assure us faith in God will result in material wealth and spiritual joy, Jesus promises no such thing. Rather, Jesus assures us the grace of God works in and through us as we turn to him in our times of need. Despite his extraordinary loss and suffering, Job remained steadfast in his faith and trust in God. Job was so confident in God's love and care for him that he was able to cry out to God and demand from God an answer for his plight. Job knew well that he had not only had to continue and persist in his suffering, but that he had also had to turn to God for strength and healing. At the height of his trial, God spoke to Job, and Job heard and saw God in a way that he had never seen or heard before. So too Bartimaeus. While the disciples grumbled among themselves who would be the greatest, Bartimaeus sought not the glory and honor of God, but God's mercy and compassion. Although he could not physically see, Bartimaeus could see Jesus as the divine Son of God and throw off all he had and run to Jesus. His suffering enabled him to see in ways that the chosen and the privileged were unable to see. While the disciples walked with Jesus for many months, they remained blind and could not recognize him as the Son of God. Bartimaeus, on the other hand, who heard not the voice of God for many years, could recognize the voice of God in Jesus and turn to him, all because he remained steadfast and faithfully trusted God in his suffering. While I would never wish anyone to suffer, I worry that we sometimes are too quick to find resolutions to our difficult experiences rather than simply be present in those moments. We are constantly told that we are to feel good and avoid pain at all cost. Ironically, the greatest proponents of this message are Christian evangelists who advocate a wealth and prosperity gospel. Walk into any bookstore and you will see the religion and spirituality section filled with books about living your best life now and guides to discovering your greatest joy and success 
here and now. Yet all of that is simply offering cheap grace, a grace that demands no cost or sacrifice on our part. Tragically, such messaging often leads people to lose faith in God when they realize that faith is often more difficult than it is easy, and that often we will not find resolution in this life. If we wish to respond to God's offer of grace, we must be willing to accept the reality of suffering and to walk through it confident that we will, in time, see God in new ways, ways we perhaps have never seen God before. This is the core message of Job and even the story of Bartimaeus. Neither man flees from his suffering, nor do they accept things as they are. Rather, each of them lets go of all their fears and anxieties and go to God confident that God will ultimately liberate them from their plight. Amen.